Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over how Jax plays AM Mirage, so let's get started. So first we're going to cover how he gets close ramp control. He'll normally throw this Molotov as well as this Flash and sometimes this Nade. And the function of these three Nades is essentially that the Molotov will land here by the steps and they'll force anybody who's playing in this area to basically fall back into the corner or to fall back towards the left side. The Flash is to blind anybody who is going to be posted up on this angle, usually an opera who's going to be spotting for the cross towards jungle. So this Flash will push, push this player back to the left side. And then the Nade will essentially uh, do damage to the player who decides to stay in the corner. So with this utility, you can basically focus all of your attention on fighting the right side. You don't have to worry too much about the left. So here we see something similar. He's going to toss that Molotov and then toss that Flash to get towards ramp control and clear the right side. Here we're going to see him uh, throw that Molotov and then he's also going to throw the Flash. But this time he's actually going to play on Balcony and this is really important for whether you're deciding to choose to play between uh, Close Ramp or Balcony. You want to use the same level of utility so that to kind of mask where you're going to be playing. You don't want to uh, be too predictable. You don't want to always play the same spot. So this is a great way to do so. Here we're going to see that he's going to toss a Molotov as well as a Nade at the start of the round. And then here he's going to add on a Smoke at Ramp. And then he's going to play Sandwich. And the thing about playing Sandwich is it's usually a spot where you're fighting to your death. So you don't really need your utility anymore. So he's not afraid to use it to cross with Sandwich to make sure he doesn't get seen. Here we're going to see something similar where he's going to toss that Molotov at the start of the round. And then do a top mid flash for his teammates. And then he's going to toss that Smoke towards Ramp. And then toss a Flash towards Palace before moving towards Sandwich. And the thing is he's willing to use all of his utility because again he's fighting to his death in Sandwich. And as well... When he uses all of his utility here, it ensures that nobody's going to peek him as he's crossing towards Sandwich, and it's going to deny the information of him even being in Sandwich in the first place. So here with that top mid flash, you'll see this. Uh, a lot, you'll see a lot of teams do this. This flash basically lands top middle for the players who are going to be defaulting. So if somebody's going to be peeking towards connected, they can get blinded. Whether they're peeking close or far, they can get blinded. And even if somebody has a late spawn, they're just approaching middle, they'll also get blinded as well. So here we're going to see him toss that flash and more typically after he throws that flash he usually just played more towards ticket and he'll keep his smoke in the molotov for the retake so again we're going to see something similar again he'll just play back towards ticket keeping his smoke in molotov for the retake so this is the only scenario that we see jacks use his smoke at the start of the round and it's when he's going to flash for his teammate at connector so uh, right here we're going to see him wait as hunter's going to be the one using the flash he's waiting for the right timing then he's going to throw the flash and then cross over. So the thing that I want to talk about is uh, the fact that he uses the smoke on this particular scenario. So when he's throwing the flash from triple, if this isn't smoked out, if somebody's posting up a ramp, they can actually see him throw the flash and they might even try to aggress him. So that's why uh, you want to throw the smoke here to prevent this player from aggressing you as he throws the flash. You don't want that to happen. So here we're going to see that from the T's perspective, he's completely blinded. He's going to get taken down by Hunter. And you also notice that he, he this is the flash that he throws. So this is the bottom one. It'll get anybody who's playing up close like this. It'll also get anybody who's going to be playing under window like this. So this is a really good flash to use. So here we're going to see him once again do that uh, ramp smoke and he's going to toss a flash up high. And then with this flash up high, this is actually more meant for the players who are at top middle behind the boxes. So when you're playing this spot here, if you use only the bottom flash, the, these boxes will actually cover it. So this flash is more intended for the people up top. The one thing is that this flash isn't necessarily perfect, but it will push the player off the angle. So whether they're playing at the boxes at mid, they're playing top mid, this will push them off the angle and not allow all of them to have a clear shot on you. So you can see them use those two, com those two flashes in combination. So normally the A player will be the one to throw the Astralis top mid smoke. So after he throws the smoke, he'll basically just go tick it and then simply just jump spot like this. Now the whole reason why the A player will throw the Astralis top mid smoke is because the B player still needs to maintain his timing to get information on whether they're going up or B apps. As it's a lot easier to retake towards A, it makes more sense for the player at A to throw the Astralis top mid smoke as he simply needs to just play towards ticket afterwards. So if you happen to have your smoke during an A exec and you're playing towards ticket, this is a good way to kind of counter. So you can throw a smoke in front of triple like this and then kind of move up along the left side here to peek towards ramp. And the reason why this is so powerful is that as soon as you start taking some shots at ramp, you can simply just fade into the smoke on the right side. And you don't have to worry about the player palace swinging out and killing you because they're not going to be able to see you in the smoke. So this is a really good play to use if you have your smoke at a ticket. 
So here we're going to see him toss that smoke towards ramp. And the whole reason why he's doing this is because his teammates are actually rotating from CT. And whenever you shift spots at A site, you always want to use your utility so that you don't get timing from anywhere. So even at this moment here, he's going to toss an extra Molotov as he moves towards Sandwich to make sure that this Palace player doesn't peek him. Here's another situation where it's a 2v4-5 situation. He needs to get info somewhere and make a play. So he tosses that Molotov towards Balcony and then starts moving up slowly towards ramp to make sure that this Palace guy doesn't peek him as he's moving up. So if you find yourself close ramp, this is something you can do. You can simply just jiggle peek it with the smoke out. And this is really powerful because even if they do a contact play, you can simply just drop a smoke like this. And then even if the T's do an A exec, you can simply drop a smoke at the entrance of the ramp and then deny their push. So sometimes you're going to want to aggress towards ramp. So notice how uh, he's basically doing this dry. He clears the left side, clears the corner, and then clears the close right. Like this on top of the flower pot, and then up top here, and then down low like this. So sometimes they'll like to play on top of the flower pot if he decides not to push all the way. And then this is a very powerful spot whenever the T's are going to be splitting from A ramp and towards middle. As uh, usually this, the typical protocol is always push towards A ramp. So here we're going to see that he's getting a little bit pinched, so he's going to push towards Kiyoshima here before fading back towards middle to get the last kill. So here we're going to see a similar situation where we see three players coming up from connector. One player is going towards palace, but as it's very typical to have more players come up from middle than A, he's going to try to clear out A ramp first before focusing on middle. Here's just something, a side note, where if players try to drop down from this top area, you're going to see the shadow first. So here we're going to see him uh, played more towards balcony and the one thing here about playing balcony is that he'll use this off angle like this as he has the right eye advantage. If the player peeks him from the left side he's going to be able to see him first. So here in this round we're going to see that the CTs actually get a kill towards upper B as it's very common to have somebody lurk towards palace. You can see that Jax after that kill he's essentially going to drop the smoke towards palace like this to allow his team to basically uh, reset and uh, change their positions if they need to. So here we're going to see him fight an A exec on Balk, and this Molotov actually hits him. But from here, this is the best spot to actually play in uh, whenever you're going to fight an A exec, as the Palace area will typically have less players. So you'll want to push towards Palace, get this kill, to be able to maintain control on Palace now. And now they're in such a good situation where it's very difficult for the T's to deal with them here. So here we're going to see him just clear out Palace if he's going to be pushing like this. Notice how he clears this angle like this. This is a very common angle. And then he'll clear towards the back before clearing the left side. Now here we're going to see him fight an A exec once again where uh, he's going to drop a smoke towards palace to basically nullify this player who might be playing here and then he's going to play under balcony. Here he'll get the first kill but notice how he doesn't necessarily overextend. He's waiting for the next uh, thing that his teammate can do. So he doesn't overextend. Only when Hunter drops into sandwich then he's actually going to uh, swing out. And this is the one thing to keep in mind when you're playing towards balcony that you want to have your player uh, here to kind of dictate the fight for you. You want him to either throw a flash or maybe he pushes in towards sandwich before you overcommit with your fight. So here we're going to see that uh, these T's are trying to dry walk out ramp and once again he's not trying to commit too much to this fight. He wants to put enough pressure though so that the T's don't get too much uh, space on him but at the same time he wants to make sure that he doesn't die. So here he he's going to trade some utility. He wants to stay alive long enough so that his teammates can either help him or they make some kind of play elsewhere on the map. So here we're going to see that he's going to wait just a little bit for his teammate to throw a flash before re-peaking ramp. So normally when you're playing under Balk, this is, a really, this is also a good spot uh, for when the T's decide to come up from connector. Notice how he lines himself up with this wood part so that nobody will be peeking him from the top part of uh, stairs to be able to get these two kills. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more future content. Thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one.